Hello, hello, Mordimers here, and today I would like to introduce you a new engine in the chess engines family, and this is Mystery. Mystery is the Komodo NNUE, so neural network-based chess engine, uh, so the idea was implemented into Komodo as well, and we have a note from the developers. We are announcing our new Dragon version of Komodo, which is now playing in the chess.com CCC tournament as Mystery, and which we expect to release soon um, and I will show you um, the standings because this tournament mystery engine debut and training just ended so I will show you just in a while and um, also you can buy a uh, Komodo on their official website at uh, the link in the description and the improvement from Komodo 14.1 to Dragon is enormous even larger than the gain Stockfish got from this NNUE idea. Depending on the time control and number of threats, it should fall somewhere in the 150 to 200 ELO range. So it sounds very, very promising. So uh, let's see um, the standings. As you see, Stockfish won um, this tournament 75 points out of 120. Every engine played uh, 20 games against uh, every other engine and of course uh, half of the white pieces, half of the black pieces and they tested 10 openings. No surprise that Lila Chess Zero got uh, second place, 78.5 points, and Lilenstein is the, the improved version of Lila Chess Zero. Lila Chess Zero is the pure um, neural network based chess engine, and Lilenstein uh, got also implemented some of the human games. So it should do better than Lila Chess Zero, but as you see, um, it's a uh, half point behind. And then in the fourth place, we have a mystery, 60. 6.5 points so pretty good score as for the new engine Stoffless uh, is now on the fifth place and but it's still better than uh, traditional Komodo and Ethereal so these are the standings very interesting uh, mystery is gonna be definitely tuned and improved and uh, we will see you know what is what is going on in this tournament and today I would like to show you uh, one of the games and um, this game was played between Stockfish and uh, mystery and I choose the game where one of the games ended with the draw and the another was decisive because that means the opening is uh, pretty much equal with a lot of uh, chances and ideas. So without further ado, let's see what happened uh, on the board. Stockfish as white, uh, we have uh, only two moves prearranged. So knight uh, f6, d4, knight f6, uh, c4 and c5. This opening, of course, is called Benoni Defense. Uh, and now White can actually, from Benoni Defense, get to the English opening. For your information, if you are not familiar here, you can go for something like Knight F3. Uh, and after exchanging, you have the English opening symmetrical variation, actually anti-Benoni uh, variation. And uh, the main idea actually is D5. And this is the first move uh, by the end engine uh, on its own. So Stockfish choose uh, to follow the Benoni. We have b5, Benko Gambit, the main line of Benoni. We have a c takes on b5, a6. And the main idea is uh, b takes on a6. It wasn't played, but I would like to just show you what is going on in this opening. It's good to know um, before we, we see the game, just to get the, you know, the, the rough ideas of the, of the opening. So what happened after d4, d5? Uh, Black actually has this beautiful diagonal uh, potentially to control. Uh, this is why g6 is played and this bishop gonna get to this diagonal. That's the main idea. Uh, Knight c3 only then bishop a6 and now uh, this pawn has the problems with going um, to e4 uh, so g3 is possible one of the options or even this e4 is possible but white not gonna castle one of the ideas here d6 and then g3 can be played the the, the king can come to g2 uh, and the game of course can continue white has one extra pawn however uh, even if it's the the past pawn uh, it's not really that great i mean it's very difficult 
First and all, this pawn does really great job here, controlling b4, so it's not like two a connected passed pawn can just advance very easily. It's still a lot of nuances here, but this is only the, the beginning, is the top of the iceberg where a lot of tactical hits are in this opening. Uh, another idea is knight c3. I will just very very fast show you the, the traps, uh, how difficult and tactical can be this opening. After a takes on b5, if white actually takes the pawn, uh, the problem is after, uh, after bishop a6 that this knight have to retreat. And if the knight retreat, uh, is everything okay? But if white decide to actually defend the, the knight, this is the problem because black gonna win the bishop. Here is the problem. Very typical uh, hit with the queen on the, on the a5 square. So after a takes on b5, what white can do is set up another trap. A lot of traps here. e4. And now look at this. Of course, b4, knight, b5, and here black have to play uh, d6. Very important move to play d6, uh, otherwise it's gonna be lost. Black cannot take this pawn. This is a trap. Look at this. Queen is 7 and the knight is lost. The problem is, uh, if you try to defend of move, uh, it doesn't really matter. F3 is coming uh, and getting the knight. If the knight uh, going back, then we're gonna have this beautiful checkmate uh, controlling also F7. So uh, these two traps uh, are very typical for Benoni. Uh, definitely both of the sides have to be aware of a lot of tactical hits. In our game, we have e3 immediately, now uh, controlling the, the b5, defending the pawn. We have bishop b7, knight c3, also very typical move, queen a5, now uh, pinning the, the knight, bishop d2, and pinning a takes on b5, bishop takes on b5. And here there is only one good move in the database where a queen b6 have to be played. So queen makes another move and the reason is very serious. If black tries to play, uh, you know, normal uh, for, for Benko, for Benoni, uh, you know, g6, bishop g7 is too slow. It's always about one tempo. Black have to be very precise here. So watch at this, g6. And then a4, just uh, cementing the position of the of the bishop on b5. And then after bishop g7, e4, e5 is coming. And it's extremely dangerous. Uh, of course, d6 cannot be played because of this pin. So that's the huge problem here. Um, and after castle, e5. And the knight have to go back. And this is really bad position. I cannot explain that this is really bad position uh, for the knight. The problem is you even cannot take this. Uh, this pawn because after knight d5 your queen is under attack so you cannot get it back uh, you're gonna lose the piece and the game the knight even can jump later to the to the e7 of course the, the the queen can come to the d8 but then simply bishop c3 solidifying the position everything is fine uh the knight also is defended and this is gonna be extremely dangerous um you know continuation you cannot just play that nobody plays like that queen b6 is the only move here avoiding uh, this discovery uh, and now e4 is not possible just for your information because after knight e4 uh, this knight defending uh, the bishop so cannot attack this knight uh, so the pawn is literally lost even if white tries to back, get back some pawns uh, black gonna very simply uh, get advantage of this position look at this uh, the pawns equal the king is still in the center black also but there are no pawns in the in the center so king is a little bit vulnerable also uh, this pawn is under attack the, the, the knight is under attack black stands really great here this is why we have knight f3 by stockfish and, and now knight d5 so this pawn is lost uh, we have a4 cementing the position of the of the bishop very typical and now again uh, you cannot just go for something like g6 the problem is knight d5 bishop d5 and now look at this boom bishop c3 with the attack on the rook that would be another mistake black have to be really really precise uh this bishop is under attack as well bishop f3 doesn't work because queen f3 this rook is under attack this rook is under attack it's completely crazy 
So uh, black again have to be very precise. This is why we have e6, uh, and this of course is the is the theory. So it was played by human also um, as well many times. We have castle. And now bishop e7 is the most popular move in this position, but we have knight b4 by mystery. So uh, another line, this was also played. Um, and now we have e4. So stockfish found um, the best move in the position with the very interesting maneuver. This bishop is going to f4 and heading to d6. And you would say, okay, uh, it's defended twice, so it's not really possible. However, the queen and bishop tactical hit uh, on the, let me show you in the blue maybe color and um, it's another issue here so as you see a lot of very complicated stuff here uh, we have bishop e7 now bishop f4 as planned uh, and now as this pawn is attacked twice um, and you cannot really get the, to the to the d5 because of the pin as you see you still need one tempo very very difficult position this is why black play uh, the knight from the 8th rank to c6 uh, and now queen d2 making a space for the rook uh, silent move very important move now we have a castle and only now bishop d6 and this was played also a um, couple of times we have one game in the database where rook f to d8 was played and the idea is that if the bishop is taken and the knight takes it and stay on e7 uh, black actually can play d5 with the support of uh, a lot of pieces one two the the knight also support and the rook also support this move so um, this was the main idea by human however mystery goes for uh, another idea bishop a6 and this is the the novelty we have bishop e7 knight e7 and now uh, queen e7 is possible to win that pawn but we have a stronger move in the position knight e5 so now again d5 is not possible because of the fork that is the problem so we have queen c7 and now knight d7 winning the pawn rook f to d8 and now look at this the knight is attacked twice uh, it's also defended twice but this defender can be of course uh, eliminated very easily okay uh, so this is why we have rook f to d1 defending bishop b5 uh, knight b5 with tempo attacking the queen so queen c7 uh, and now the rook cannot come to to a7 uh, just to support that but can do it probably this way okay uh, so stockfish found very interesting maneuver and look at this knight a3 giving away this a7 square uh, the idea is to bring the knight to defend the, the the knight however rook a7 cannot be played because this knight actually uh, all the position is guarded by the tactic rook a7 and look at this knight f6 with the check and with the double attack on this rook this rook was important defender of the position okay um, and after that of course white gonna have the extra exchange uh, and winning game so uh, this is why we have knight e to c6 now defending giving extra defense uh, uh, to the d8 rook uh, and now rook a7 is possible but at the same time a stockfish has the time uh, to bring the knight so we have a knight c4 rook a7 knight c to b6 with the attack on the queen uh, and here uh, mystery found the way to go look at this rook a to d7 sacrificing the exchange but it's not so easy actually uh, to continue knight d7 and now knight d4 uh, trapping the knight okay so the knight is trapped very beautiful tactical hits here um, and now white have to decide how to continue and stockfish had actually three options so one is uh, give away this uh, this knight play something like knight c5 and try to play with these two connected past pawns and uh, of course the knight is lost and after king h1 because of the of the tactical hit on the on the queen uh, then play e5 uh, solidifying the position of the of the knights and these two knights gonna play against the the rook and two pawns uh, is still you know very very tricky position another uh, option would be knight e5 
controlling actually f3 so uh this jump isn't that that great actually it's winning the queen but of course the, that is the high cost uh, because two rooks for the queen uh just a reminder that white already won the exchange here uh so queen b8 uh, and then the knight has to uh retreat so knight c4 uh and here first uh, instead of playing knight f3 immediately first knight b to c2 trying to get the exchange back um, and after rook a to c1 only then uh win this queen uh, and then jump with the knight to d4 very nice blocker of the of the open d file okay so that could be the idea and it's a very dangerous position the knight can jump for example to b3 and uh, the knight can jump to the f3 a lot of forks around of course uh, and also another thing is this queen can come to f4 uh, to g5 uh, to h4 and also harass creating some mating ideas here together with the knight so the position could be uh, could be quite tricky so uh, stockfish choose some another uh, line we have knight b6 attacking the queen so queen have to be moved we have queen a6 now attacking the knight and also pr uh, controlling c4 so the knight cannot escape there uh, but we have a5 now defending this knight uh, we have knight f3 this of course was uh, was hanging around here so uh, g takes on f3 rook d2 uh, rook d2 and now we have h6 so what just happened white have the two rooks for the queen uh, but also two rooks and a pawn and a pawn okay uh so it seems like white stands slightly better here but it's all everything about the the little tactical hits still uh you know a lot of things can happen in this game we have knight d7 now attacking the pawn so c4 uh, and this pawn uh, does a really great job first it's defended by the queen a uh, second it's defending also b3 so any support for the lonely a pawn is not possible here and now h4 uh, and here is the critical moment of the game because both the engines have to calculate very precisely um, and it's not that easy the position is extremely complicated uh, knight d3 probably was the way to go blocking the uh, the open d file but at the same time controlling uh controlling c5 so the knight cannot jump there and the queen still stays on a6 uh, but white can actually win this uh, c4 pawn so that can be a problem for example knight b4 rook c3 knight c6 of course not to win the, the pawn on a um, a5 because these two rooks would uh, pin the knight and win the knight so that would not be a great idea uh, but rather after rook a4 uh, then knight d4 it's still very very tricky for now uh, we have very simple threat and also if this rook takes uh, then we're gonna lose the pawn on f3 and then pawn on h4 so uh, two pawns for one is still you know very complicated probably king g2 would be played but then knight e2 uh, rook c takes on c4 so uh, at the end uh, white would have this two connected past pawn but the position is still very very tricky so for example knight f4 with check and with the idea of bringing the queen to d6 uh, controlling this diagonal attacking the knight and at the same time uh, with the possibility of attacking the king from the first rank um, and if the king is moved somewhere like um, I don't know g1 on h3 this knight still can de deliver some perpetual check and uh, black can uh, you know fight for the for the draw or even for the win in some variations so still very very complicated stuff here however we have king h7 so mystery decided uh, that actually look at this variation knight c5 so the queen is uh, at, under attack have to be moved so queen c6 and now we have a6 and this pawn is going to win the game uh, but mystery calculated it this way uh, i take on knight a6 we have knight a6 now the knight is far far away uh, so i'm gonna win uh, three pawns for this knight 
So that was the idea here. So we have C3 first um, exchanging these pawns on the on the queen side uh, just to you know uh, lock all the position here. So B takes on C6, queen C6, and now the rook is under attack. So rook D to D1, and now queen F3 winning uh, another pawn. Uh, now we have knight C5 defending the pawn on E4. And now queen h5 attacking this knight and also the, the last pawn. So rook a to c1 defending and now queen h4. So three pawns uh, for the knight that was exchanged. However, that was the gambit. So a black has only two pawns um, for the knight. So uh, what is better in this in this position, in your opinion? It looks like white have the edge here. So king f1, we have queen h5, king e1, uh, queen g4. We have rook c3 now, um, h5, it's just a matter of technique, so uh, it's uh, difficult to explain. Uh, white tries to get in initiative, rook d7, we have queen g1, king e2, now queen a1 attacking the rook, so rook e3, uh, and now queen b2 with check. We have rook d2, so white cannot be as active as they would like to be. Uh, we have queen a1, uh, and now e5, tightening the position of black so any moves like f5 are not easy to execute now and now we have h4 so running with the pawns uh, we have knight d3 now uh, we have g5 supporting uh, and now rook d1 kicking the queen queen a4 so the queen is gonna to support the the march of the pawns uh, rook g1 controlling g4 so uh, the queen cannot come there uh, we have king h6 so the king gonna support king f1 uh, king h5 and now king g2 so the king uh, is the active piece of course in the end game uh, controlling the march of the pawns uh, we have queen c6 with check we have f3 blocking and now queen c4 preparing maybe g4 um, this way we have rook g2 e1 connecting the rooks and now g4 isn't that great because after exchanging it looks like pretty attractive however king h2 and what you're gonna do this two rooks actually controls the first and the third rank uh, and uh, also defending the the pawn uh, so not not much can be done and this knight is actually free uh, to jump around and, and and win the game so uh, instead we have king g6 now uh, rook from the first rank to the to the second rank just to uh, control the second rank there are no checks possible here uh, so we have queen c7 uh, we have knight f2, as I said, the knight gonna jump freely now. Uh, we have king h6, king h1, and now queen b7. Uh, pinning the knight, of course, uh, g4 is not possible because the knight is um, controlling. Uh, but here Stockfish actually uh, said, okay, go for this, I'm gonna play uh, knight h3. So mystery went for g4, now we have uh, knight g1, uh, and now what are the options for mystery? If the pawn is taken, then simply rook f3, and... Uh and what can black do? King g7, let's say, uh, king h2, uh, anyway... What white can do is even exchange uh, these two rooks for the queen. Uh, and if the knight can just control this pawn, uh, the king gonna take this pawn uh, and win the game. Uh, that's the simplest way to, uh, to imagine. Uh, also g3, which looks like a little bit better. However, rook e4, and there are weaknesses also, also here. King h5, but now a rook g4, a cutting of the, the, the king. And here is the problem. The rook gonna enter the game this way, and all of these squares cannot be controlled. Uh, even queen d7, uh, rook a2, queen b7, and uh, this way that would be possible however the rook also uh, can create another threat here and win the pawn h4 and win the game so after all of these calculations mystery decided okay the game is lost and play king g7 uh, we have rook e4 going after the pawns and here complete resignation we have king f8 uh, and of course after rook g4 this pawn is gonna be lost as well and uh, and yeah, not much to show here, 
Uh, queen b3 with the attack on the on the pawn so if the if the knight takes then of course the the pawn can be taken but king h3 uh stockfish of course is very very precise we have queen b1 uh, and this actually is game over both of these pawns uh, were lost uh, and now uh you know the knight extra is enough to win this is just matter of technique so uh we have just just i will show you a couple of moves here okay i i can show you all the moves because uh in chess.com platform the end engines uh, don't resign, they play till the end to, to, to the threefold repetition or to the checkmate uh, and this is why uh, we had to see the rest, so knight f2, queen a1, um, rook g to e4, um, then king e7, uh, then we had the rook c2, f5 finally, uh, king f6, then the rook c7, uh, e5, uh, knight g4, uh, king e6, of course rook e5 was possible here, uh, but we didn't see that, that was also winning of course, uh, we have uh, rook e to c4, uh, queen a2 with check, king g3, queen b1, and um, from the fourth rank we deliver the check, king d5, now knight e3 with check, uh, king d4, we had the king f2, uh, king a2, one more check, uh, blockade, rook c2, and here mystery uh, doesn't care about the queen anymore because all the continuations are losing, so we have uh, e4, rook a2, and of course it is all over, e takes on f3, uh, and now uh, rook a5, a mating net, uh, starting the mating net, uh, king d3, now rook d5, uh, king e4, and this is a checkmate. So uh, Stockfish, as you see, won in the style. However, the game was very complicated and Benko Gambit very sharp. I'm very happy that we could see that. And if you like this video, press like. If for some reason you don't like it, press that like. And if you want to see more games, engines, super engines, uh, tournaments and games, press subscribe, smash the bell button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.